church. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Can we raise a louder shout of hallelujah to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords, who has conquered the grave, who has defeated death. Hallelujah. Amen. Can we all turn to our neighbors and say, I'm a winner. Because Jesus is alive and he lives in me. Amen. We welcome you all to this special Easter Sunday service. And also all those who have joined us online, we welcome you on behalf of Blessing Today International Church. Welcome once again to this special Easter Sunday service. Let's all quickly uh, take up our Bibles or mobiles and read these scriptures. Luke chapter 24 from verse 1. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered, they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright, the women bowed down with their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here. He has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee? The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can you just look to your side and look to the person and say, He has risen. He has risen. Can you look to the other side and say, He has risen. He has risen. Yes, 2,000 years ago, Jesus of Nazareth was risen from his death. And today he sits on the right side of God. And today, because he lives, we will live. All those areas which seem dead to us in our lives will live. And there will be life. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Yes. If you do, give a hallelujah. 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 Can we close our eyes and pray? Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we come... In your presence today, we pray in the name of Jesus, Holy Spirit, move mightily in this wonderful Easter Sunday as we come to celebrate the Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Father, as many people celebrate Easter, today we have come to celebrate the Resurrection of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. 2,000 years ago, Jesus of Nazareth became a sacrifice the Lamb of God, the worthy sacrifice for the sins of this world, the sins of everyone. Today, on the same day, Jesus rose from the death, Amen. from the cross. Death could not hold him. The stone that was laid before the tomb could not hold him back. That could not stop him. The soldiers could not stop him. The devil and his plans could not stop him. The world could not stop him. Hallelujah. Today, I declare that he has risen. And the resurrection power is here today among us. Hallelujah. Because he lives, hallelujah, we will live. Death could not hold him. He is our risen King. Hallelujah. And today I declare it is foolishness to those who are perishing. The cross and the blood of Jesus is foolishness to those who are perishing. But it is power to us who believe. Hallelujah. There is power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. There is power in His resurrection. And today there will be life in all of us who believe in this. Hallelujah. Today, 
Hallelujah. I pray, Father. I pray for this worship team as they worship the Lord, the resurrection power and the atmosphere is going to change as the man of God releases the word today. Hallelujah. The resurrection power will happen, will work in all our lives. Hallelujah. All the areas that seem dead will come to life. Hallelujah. We will see the work of the Lord in our life. Hallelujah. We thank you, Father, for making a wonderful Easter Sunday today. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Resurrection Sunday, everybody. Let's put our hands together. Let's worship the Lord. Hallelujah. Come on. My Savior, Redeemer, lift me, me from the mire and clay. Almighty, forever. Amen. Can we sing it one more time? My Savior. Cause you came near, cause you came near From the everlasting to the world we live The Father's only Son
together. And hallelujah for all you've done. And hallelujah for all Sing hallelujah for all you've done. So grateful, and hallelujah for all you've done. And hallelujah for all you've done, because you came near from the everlasting to the world we live, the Father's only you came near from the everlasting home to the world we live the father's only son you live you die you rose again on high you opened the way for the world to live again because you lived you lived you died, you rose again on high. You opened the way for the world to live again. And hallelujah for all you've done. Hallelujah for all you've done. And hallelujah for all. If you believe that because Jesus lives, I can face tomorrow. Amen. Let's put our hands together and thank the Lord for sending His Son. Here we go. Send His Son. They call Him Jesus. He came to love. He lamb for me.
lift up the praise in this place for our risen Savior. Come on, our risen Savior deserves a better clap offering, deserves a better shout of praise. Hallelujah to our risen King who sits on the throne now and forevermore. We worship you, Jesus, in this place. Father, we are so grateful for your mighty presence in this place. And today we fix our eyes upon you, the author and finisher of our salvation, the one who died on the cross for us, the one who paid the price for us, but death could not hold him, the grave could not hold him. This Resurrection Sunday, our hearts are filled with joy because the grave is empty and we have freedom in all areas of our life because the grave is empty. The same power that raised Christ from the dead is alive and working in us and it is moving in this place. Hallelujah. How many of you can sense the Holy Spirit moving in this place? The same Spirit that raised Christ from the dead is moving in this place. May He lead us to worship the King of Kings.
drops of wine and the blazing sun shall pierce the night and I will rise among the saints my gaze transfixed on Jesus face come on this is our hope this morning let me sing it again he shall return shall return in rolls of Let's sing Jesus. The blazing sun shall pierce the night and I will Jesus, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Let's hail His name together. We worship you, Lord, in this place. Come on. And all hail King Jesus. And all hail the Lord of heaven and earth. And all
this place. Sing your name.
Come on, let's give Jesus, King Jesus, our resurrected King Jesus, a mighty clap offering in this place. Thank you, Jesus, because you are alive. We are alive, Father. And because the grave is empty, Father, we know that we have a hope to hold on to. This is our hope. This is the anchor that you are the resurrected King. And everything that we face in our lives, Father, we have the victory already because of what you did this day more than 2,000 years back. We thank you for all the grace that is coming upon us, that is coming upon the church through the resurrection power. We receive it in this place. In Jesus' name we pray and the church shout a big Amen. amen. A bigger resurrection, amen. amen. Look at your neighbor and say, Jesus is not in the grave. So don't act like you are in the grave. Amen. This is a funeral service. No, we're not here to celebrate the funeral. And we're not here to, you know, think about the funeral memorial service of our Jesus. We are here to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus because the tomb is empty. And Satan is defeated. Sin is defeated. Death is defeated. We don't have any more enemies. Hallelujah. Jesus is the victor. Amen. We're going to hear a wonderful testimony from a dear brother. Uh, brother Vergis Abraham and uh, he's an amazing amazing uh, brother that we counted a privilege to have him as part of our family he runs an amazing uh, we can all be seated he runs an amazing um, play school and for, for young kids called Genius Learning Academy and uh, God has been using him powerfully uh, this season and we're going to hear uh, his life story a little bit for some time I know we have a short service so uh, but for some time, let's together welcome, brother. Come on, let's put our hands together. Good morning, church. So I do this at school also. I didn't hear the good morning. It's not loud enough. Good morning, church. So today we celebrate Easter. So I'd like everybody to just show the love of God. Maybe you could shake hands or hug your neighbor. And for those of you online... Hug somebody there also as well. You could wish them happy Easter also. So I don't know if my testimony is amazing or not, but yes, I do have a testimony. And uh, when Nancy and Bob told me to come and give it in five minutes, I was like, okay, how do you fit a lifetime of God's faithfulness into five minutes? Just not possible. But I'll try my very best. So... Uh, where do I start? April, this is going to be my 10th year with God. April 26, 2014 is definitely a day I'd never forget. That's the day I met Jesus. And as I reflect on the last couple of messages of pastor about person, presence, power and provision, I can stand proudly here and say, yes, it is true very much true in my life. I have met the person called Jesus. I have experienced his presence and I also know of his power and provision as well. This, I'm just like all of y'all. Those who are seeing online, those of you all are here. But this was not my story. Ten years back, I was diagnosed with depression. I was in Dubai. I was doing financially well. I lost all my wealth during the recession. I got cheated. Uh, I busted my back. I was in bed looking at a ceiling for almost 10 months. Uh, I was on medication. I sought healing everywhere except for Jesus. Uh, many faith healers, alcohol. Uh, friend after friend asked for help. This side, that side, went to many hospitals, nothing happened. Uh, finally, I, I remember an old teacher of mine, she taught me how to write Auntie Ivy. She told me about a church called Adnight that uh, does this healing and deliverance ministry. And I had no clue about all this stuff. So I had no other hope. So I went, I ended up in Bangalore somewhere around April end. And I attended this nine day camp. And there I met Jesus. I got healed of my back injury. I have a medical report. I couldn't pick it up in such a short time, which said I had a, I wouldn't walk, I, <clears throat> it's a little emotional. 
I wouldn't ride a motorcycle again. Uh, many things that many people could do, I couldn't do. But I don't know if there are photos. That's yeah. That's me at the highest peak in the Himalayas. The doctor uh, was wrong. There is a greater healer called Jesus. Many people said I wouldn't become anything in life. I just took an award a few weeks back. I am amongst the top 50 early childhood educators in the country. That's Jesus right there. A uh, lot of family members told that I would never become anything in life. I wouldn't get properly married. My wife, I don't know if she's reached. <laughs> but uh, I'm mar happily married and I've got two children. So all I'm here to say is, as we celebrate Easter, I think I have a photo here of me and my family standing with a picture of a cross. Easter is all about Jesus. This is why we celebrate Easter. And every single word on that picture is real. And it's not just available to me, it's available to each and every one of you. So I would encourage all of you today, as we enter worship, as we enter word to, I don't know what troubles you, I do not know what burdens you have, I do not know what you're going through, or if there's somebody loved, bring them to Jesus. You to go to Jesus and bring them to also to Jesus is all I have to say. There's this song that comes to my heart, these words also, that I remember 10 years back, trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge me and I will make your path straight. I'd like to take this time to tell you those words are real. Trust him, he is faithful even if you are not. That's what the cross represents, love of Christ. He loves us even if you don't know him. So I'd like you to the experience that love today. Thank you, everybody. Can you shout hallelujah? Lift your hands, Father. We thank you for giving us one more opportunity to celebrate your resurrection. Lord Jesus, we are open. We surrender ourselves completely into your presence and to your will. How we weigh this morning, Father among us, in us, through us, we give you glory and honor in advance. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. Amen. So today I just would like to conclude the deliverance series. This is the third message, including Nehemiah's. It is the fourth one. I am skipping the third one. Um, everyone on earth, when he comes to the Lord, he or she needs deliverance in four areas, you may remember. Number one, demons. We need deliverance from demons. And the solution is to cast out. Everybody say cast out. Then strongholds, cast down. Then curses, cut down. And the last one is flesh. What is the remedy? To crucify. Crucify the flesh. The opening scripture for today is Ephesians chapter 2. Verse number 1 onwards. Ephesians 2 verses 1 onwards. Shall we read together? I'm reading from an IV. As for you, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. Can we agree that? Yes. We were once dead. Second verse, in which you used to live when you followed the ways of this world. Say, the ways of this world. The ways of this world. And of the ruler of the kingdom of the air. There is a second enemy. We have three enemies. One is the way of this world. The second is the ruler of the kingdom of the air. 
than the spirit who is now at work in those who are disobedient. That includes all the demonic uh, spirits. Number three, all of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh. That is the third enemy. Three major enemies of a child of God. The world, the devil, the flesh. Three enemies are mentioned here. And following the desires and thoughts, like the rest, we were by nature deserving of wrath. Verse number four. But because of his great love for us, everybody say, his great love for me. His great love for me. Who is rich in mercy, made us alive. Say, made me alive. Made me alive. With Christ. With Christ. He made me alive with Christ. Hallelujah. This, this has already happened or is yet to happen? According to the grammar here, He made us alive. Already happened, right? Already happened. Even when we were dead in our in transgressions, it is by grace you have been saved. Say amen. amen. And God raised us up with Christ. Hallelujah. If we check the grammar, again it is in past tense. He already raised us up with Christ. Touch somebody and say, your resurrection is over. Hallelujah. He already raised us up with Christ. Amen. Remember when Jesus was crucified, we were in him. When he rose up, he is in us. Amen. Amen. Once again, he carried me when he was crucified. I was uh, in him. But when he resurrected, he came inside of me. Colossians 1.27 the hope of glory. Christ in you, the hope of glory. See the difference. Today, he is in me. Amen. Now, and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. This already happened or yet to happen? He seated us. What do you understand? Already. already happened. Where are you now? Seated. You are not seated on plastic chairs on the floor here. Spiritually, positionally, Amen. you are already seated in the spirit. You are already seated with Christ in the heavenly realms. Hallelujah. I expected a greater amen. amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, the cross, you can write this down. The cross procures salvation. The spirit produces salvation. Once again. The cross procures salvation for me, but the Holy Spirit produces salvation in me. He is the one who is coming inside of me and producing salvation inside of me. Now it is my duty to cooperate with him and work out that salvation that happens in our daily life. Say amen. amen. Romans 8, 10 and 11. I'm going to give you a lot of scriptures today. But if this is, a, this is an Easter treat, Lord of scriptures, Romans 8, 10 and 11. But if Christ is in you, say it, the Christ is where? In, in you. you. Even though your body is subject to death, this body is destined to death. Every heartbeat is a drumbeat to the funeral. I don't want to shock you, but that is a fact. Did he catch it? Yeah. So your body is subject to death because of sin. The spirit gives life because of righteousness. Hallelujah. I want more response here. Hallelujah. Are you really walking with me? Still with me. Amen. 11. And if spirit of him 
who raised Jesus from the dead is living in you. What does it say? He who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies Amen. because of his spirit who is living in you. Somebody believe the scriptures please. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now this has a present effect and a future uh, of fulfillment. Many people relate this only to the resurrection of the human body, the mortal body. No sir, it says if the spirit of him who raised Christ from the dead is living in you right now still now he will release life into your mortal bodies if you are a child of god everything starts from the holy of holies say holy of holies holy of holies you are holy of, you are a temple of god your holy of holies is the spirit amen the shekina glory will come the life will come inside the holy of holies and it will be spreading into where the inner court that is your soul your mind will and emotions then it will reach where your mortal bodies hallelujah so even now as you're sitting here this easter sunday the life that is coming from flowing from your spirit will be released into your soulical realm and also into your physical realm get ready for that say amen 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 hallelujah Now the third enemy we saw there was what flesh everybody said the flesh the flesh there are th- th- this word the flesh is used in different contexts with different meanings the word in greek is sarx write that down s a r x sarx say sarx that is greek flesh means flesh is what sarx number one meaning is human body Genesis 2:23 Born of my bones and the flesh of my flesh is about what human body Genesis 2:24 they shall become one flesh one body in marriage that is human body sarx is used there John chapter 1 verse number 14 Jesus came in the flesh in the sarx meaning jesus the word became flesh hallelujah the almighty god took a human body somebody said thank you jesus thank you, isn't that wonderful yes. jesus had two legs two hands one mouth two eyes two ears all the organs that i have touch somebody else and he can understand you amen if he can understand you number 2 meaning is human beings or people acts 217 pour out i will pour out my spirit on all flesh meaning what all people all human beings human race luke 36 all flesh shall see the salvation of god meaning all human beings will see the salvation of god that's a wonderful promise then ephesians chapter 6 and verse number 12 we do not wrestle against flesh and blood meaning we are not mm, wrestling against human beings a uh, human race number 3 flesh sarx means fallen or sin nature sinful nature that is the meaning that's what we are going to look at today romans 8 8 those who are in the flesh cannot please god not in the human body not about the human beings it's about fallen nature sinful nature those who are in the sinful nature fallen nature can never please god romans 13 verse number 14 do not gratify the desires of the flesh not the human body but the sinful nature first corinthians chapter 5 verse 5 to i am interesting one fellow to satan for the destruction of the flesh not the destruction of the human body but the destruction of his sinful nature so in three ways the word sarx the flesh is used in the scriptures is that clear to you yes so what is this flesh generally the flesh is the fin- sinful fallen state of human beings the bible says all have sinned and have fallen short of the glory of god 
the flesh is working as a negative power everybody is a negative power a negative power in opposition to the spirit the holy spirit okay is an inclination the flesh is an inclination towards sin inclination towards sin that we have received through the generational lines all the way from adam it started with the first man so in the flesh because of the flesh i am identified with the first adam but because of the spirit and the life i am identified with the last adam the christ say amen amen the flesh is the carnal state of our nature everybody say carnal state carnal state that means according to the senses we have a tendency to live according to the sensory knowledge next one it is a built in law of failure everybody is important it is a what built in law of failure making it impossible to please god or serve god now i am coming to a deeper understanding for flesh in the life of a child of god generally this is the meaning but if you are a born again child of god your flesh is a little different the way you have to see is it, a, it, it, it should be in a little different way it is a sin nature in this sorry listen to this first the sin nature in your spirit is completely taken away at the moment you got saved amen amen hallelujah everybody didn't listen to that which is called the old man you remember the good friday sermon yes the cross and the blood so the old man was crucified that sin nature was crucified along with jesus 2000 years ago hallelujah hallelujah it, it is gone so second corinthians chapter 5 verse number 17 says all things have become new you are a new creation where in the spirit that means in the spirit there is no sin nature it is recreated in the image and likeness of the son of god it is all that he done but this is important there is a left over in the body and soul I write that down there is what a left over where in the soul and your body in the soul and your body body the word in greek is soma everybody says soma 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 spirit is pneuma soul is suke and body is soma flesh is sarch the physical body originally is soma two things this the physical body means the the organs the uni, the, the union of or the unit of organs that you carry along in the body that is the body that is soma but flesh sin nature is sarx even though the same word is used for human body to denote human body sometimes originally it is soma now there is a left over of the sin nature where in your soul and in your body is that clear yes. is that clear these two things combine together what the soul and body combine together programmed by the old man is called flesh for a born again child of god i don't know you understood or not yes. is that clear yes for a unregenerated person unsaved person it is the sin nature the old man everything that means spirit soul body everything is under the grip of that flesh but if you are born again your spirit is already created in the image of christ new creation say new creation amen new creation but the unit the 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 union between what the soul and body together which carries the old programming is called what flesh for a born again child of god so after the born again 
experience the old man died the flesh remains everybody say the old man died the old man died say the old man passed away the old man passed the flesh remains but the flesh remains so if you are born again the old man died right. hmm what is remaining the flesh remains where not in your spirit in your soul and in your body and which carries what the old programming this is where you need what a new programming amen yes romans chapter 12 and verse number 2 renew your mind this is where you need what new programming by the word amen. come out of the world system come into the word system amen this is where you need the new programming now there is no good flesh or bad flesh all flesh is bad hello all flesh everybody's flesh is bad even if you are a pastor or apostle prophet anointed man of god anointed woman of god your flesh is bad you can never make it good hallelujah hallelujah there is religious flesh very seemingly very pious godly still it is bad god hates religious flesh also flesh is always bad romans chapter 6 verses 12 and 13 therefore do not let sin reign in your mortal body so that you obey its evil desires this is a command to the born again do not let it is in your choice do not let sin reign in your mortal body sin was your old master hello sin was your old master he is still alive. you have a new master today who amen god amen. the holy spirit is your new master amen. so never surrender yourself to the old master again sin again amen 13 do not offer any part of yourself to sin any part of yourself to sin as an instrument of come on wickedness, wickedness. but rather offer yourselves to god as those who have been brought from death to life and offer every part of yourself to him as an instrument of righteousness you can write this down the old man was a slave to sin but the slave died the master is still alive the master is still alive now as a rule this is important your body is neither bad or good it is neutral the bible says your body is also the temple of the holy spirit am i right amen so your body can be the temple of the holy spirit first corinthians chapter 6 verse number 19 and 20 i'm giving a lot of scriptures maybe reaching home you can open the youtube once again and write down all the notes in the right way So 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse number 19 and 20 do you not know that your bodies are temples of the holy spirit everybody say my body my body is the temple of the holy spirit is the temple of the holy spirit 1 Corinthians chapter 3 verse number 16 and 17 the last part says god's temple is sacred god's temple is holy that means if the holy spirit is living in you your body is sacred your body is holy remember this is very important your body your body can be controlled or led by either the spirit or the soul very important so after born again experience you have a choice you can surrender your body either to the holy spirit or to the flesh body will obey if you are living in the soul realm what happens the body will obey the soul but if you subject the members of your body to the spirit realm spirit realm there the life will flow you will be led by the spirit realm i'll give you a verse for that romans chapter 7 and verse number 5 it says for 
we were once in the realm of the we were when we were in the realm of the flesh say realm of the flesh the there is a realm where you can live where you can behave the sinful passions aroused by the law were at work in us so that we bore fruit for death that was our past now after you got saved romans 8 and verse number 9 you however are not in the realm of the flesh today Amen. hello 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 Amen. everybody say i am not i am not in the realm of the flesh in the realm of the but flesh. are in the realm of the spirit Amen. with capital s realm of the holy spirit Amen. your spirit is where in the realm of the holy spirit and uh, if indeed the spirit of god lives in you and if anyone does not have the spirit of christ they do not belong to christ but if you have the spirit of god in you you belong to christ somebody say amen 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 galatians chapter 5 and verse number 17 um for the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they are in conflict with each other so that you are not to do whatever you want this is a great truth look here please the moment you got saved a war started a conflict started inside the flesh is called the enemy enemy within there is a war going on inside of you this is a civil war going on inside of you between your spirit the holy spirit and the flesh the flesh is the enemy within the devil is the enemy without i mean outside external enemy this is the internal enemy who is the internal enemy the flesh you understand what i'm saying yes see the unsaved people there is no conflict because they are slaves to the flesh they have surrendered themselves to the flesh but the moment you got saved the conflict started the war started within you look here please that means if there is a struggle going on inside between the flesh fleshly desires and the spirit's desires that proves you are born again amen you are saved amen if there is no war going on you are unregenerated fellow hallelujah hallelujah so every born again child of god including apostle paul all the super apostles all had to go through this war so many people this is where many people even doubt their salvation experience i have temptations inside i have evil thoughts coming i want to pray but i can't i want to read the bible but i can't something is pulling me back no problem brother sister there is common in the christendom every child of god will go through this if there is no conflict that means you are not born again you are not a child of god is that clear yes. hallelujah hallelujah amen so the presence of the holy spirit will expose the flesh hallelujah amen Now, by the way i have a question who created sin how many of you say god created sin you are so godly how many of you say the devil created sin very diplomatic <laughs> do you know the fact that the devil cannot create anything he is not a creator then who created the answer is the sin sin is not a creation it is a state when you lack something that's it what is sin it is coming short of the glory of god romans 3:23 it is coming short of the glory of god and it is coming short of the standard of god nobody created it it is that state it is not a creation of anyone now next question who created the flesh 
who created the flesh the flesh is the mixture of god creation you are god creation and sin it is a mixture sin was infused transfused into your system and thus came the flesh in existence i believe the truth shall set you free if you know the truth the Amen. truth will set you free somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah now the thing is the devil's strategy today is to give all kinds of wrong and false ideas to the children satan will tell you don't be afraid of your flesh no problem it is okay you will never fall down you will never fall down to temptation that is very bad never trust your flesh touch somebody and say never trust your flesh never trust your flesh even if you have celebrated the golden jubilee of your salvation never trust your what flesh flesh you can never trust your flesh in any moment because the desires of the flesh is against the desires of the spirit amen is an enemy of god amen. you have to surrender your flesh to the spirit amen mhm galatians 5 verse number 24 those who belong to christ jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires that the 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 flesh has what passions and lusts desires first john chapter 2 verse number 15 and 16 do not love the world or anything in the world if anyone loves the world love for the love for the father is not in them 16 for everything in the world the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life comes not from the father but from the world three things are mentioned there the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes and the pride of life all these th- things are working against the holy spirit inside of you these are the main three major three areas where you will be tempted and when the temptation comes the holy spirit is your resident helper call upon the holy spirit he will lead you the right way he will show you the right way somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah romans chapter 7 and verse number 25 is talking about the enslavement of the flesh matthew 26 verse number 41 talks about jesus even jesus said the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak it is talking about what the weakness of the flesh the the, the flesh is weak it cannot please god your spirit is willing it is strong Amen. Amen. Now I want to read this. Galatians 5 verse number 19 onwards. The works of the flesh. A long list is given there. Maybe I will not be reading the entire scripture portion. Uh, Galatians 5 19. Now the works of the flesh are evident. Flesh has its works. The list is given. Adultery. fornication this is nkjv adultery fornication uncleanness lewdness idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousies jealousies is what the work of the flesh of the, anybody has jealousy here where is the jealousy scope let me check jealousy is coming from where your flesh envy jealousy outbursts of wrath selfish ambitions dissensions heresies envy murders murder is the work of the flesh you read in the newspaper somebody killed somebody what is that work of the flesh drunkenness hey drunkenness the bible says is work of the flesh revelries and the like of which i tell you beforehand just as i also told you in the time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god of 
God. Is that very clear? Yes. There is no gray area. It is black and white. So clear. Amen. Those who practice, everybody say practice. Practice. Now, this is where you have to understand the difference between practicing sins and struggling with sins. Every genuine child of God struggles with sin. Hello. But if somebody is practicing sin, he is destined for hell. Whether you have a Christian name, whether you are coming to church or not, you, your destiny is hell. Because the Bible says, such people will not inherit the kingdom of God. You understand what I am saying? Practitioners of sins. What is practicing? You practice songs, right? You practice keyboard. You practice many things. The intention is to better. You, you make yourself better in that. Practice and practice and practice. And you will become an expert in that. That is practicing sin. Okay? If anybody, even in the church circles, even if you call yourself off born again, saved, if you practice sins, hmm, you will never inherit the kingdom of God. Somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. Um, another area. Philippians chapter 3 verse number 3 to 9. Human performance before God to please him is the work of the flesh. Any human labor, any human work, any human endeavor to please God, please God in the human power, in the human ability is called the work of, work of the flesh. Philippians chapter 3 verse number 3 to 9. Paul is giving us a list of everything he did in his religion to please God, which he himself is addressing as flesh. Just read that. For it is he, it is we who are the circumcision we who serve God by his spirit serve God by his spirit not in the flesh by his spirit that is the only way John 4 24 if you want to worship God you have to worship him in spirit and truth he who serve God by his spirit who boast in Christ Jesus and who put no confidence in the flesh Put no confidence in the flesh. And verse number 4 onwards, he says, Though I myself have reasons for such confidence, confidence in the flesh. If someone else thinks they have reasons to put confidence in the flesh, I have, I have more. Then the list, circumcised on the eighth day, the people of, of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew of Hebrews, in regard to the law, a Pharisee. That means all the religious identity, all your aristocracy, all everything that you are proud of about your lineage, about your genealogy, about your education, theological degrees or whatever. Everything is counted as what? Flesh. You can serve God and please Him only by the Holy Spirit. So all the religious activities, including, including Christian religious activities, are counted as what? The flesh. This is a shocking truth. Listen to me, sit straight. I said sit straight. This is something very important. Most of the Christian activities going on in the Christian today is in the flesh. You can sing a beautiful hymn. But if you are doing it in the flesh, doing it just in the skill, just a performance, it has no connection with the Holy Spirit whatsoever. It will never, never reach heaven. If you have the nature of the flesh, you can never please God, the Bible says. So you have to discern everything. Even prayers can be prayed in the flesh. Worship can be worshipped in the flesh. Ministry can be done in the flesh, in the human power. This is why Zechariah chapter 4 and verse number 6 says, Not by power, 
not by might but by my spirit says the lord the new testament everything that is happening in the new testament should be in the spirit somebody say amen 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 hallelujah later he says i consider them garbage now he was a pharisee he was proud of his religion he was proud of his aristocracy he was proud of so many things all these things now he am on now he considers us what garbage dung another translation says but the thing is sometimes we venerate dung we frame dung we put it in a glass case we are proud of our dung Paul says I consider them garbage. I don't want righteousness of my own. I don't want. Jeremiah 17 verse number 5 to 8. Cursed is the man. The cursed is the one who trusts in man. Cursed. There is a curse upon all the works of the flesh. There is a curse upon Oh this is my prayer today. People, those who are watching us online, this is my my heart's prayer today. The Holy Spirit should throw light into our hearts and minds so that we can discern the works of the flesh and the fruit of the spirit. Amen. Come on, come on, come on. Somebody pray that prayer. Lord, give me that discerning gift to understand which is in the flesh and which is in the spirit. Hallelujah. Consequences of the flesh. Number one, you will reap destruction. Galatians 6, 7 and 8. You will reap what? Destruction. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. Whoever sows to please their flesh. What is the flesh? The remains of the flesh. the left over that is still in your soul that means in your mind and in your body even after the old man was crucified even after the new creation came in your spirit the left over the residual effect that you still carry in your systems so if a, a man reaps what he sows whoever sows to please their flesh from the flesh will reap what destruction, destruction. everybody said destruction destruction the next is more shocking romans 8:13 for if you live according to the flesh you will die you can expect a spiritual death and then later your physical body also will die so the number one destruction number two death number three you will not inherit the kingdom of god we already read that galatians chapter 5 verse number 19 and 221 hallelujah hallelujah matthew 7 21 to 23 not everyone who says to me lord lord shall enter the kingdom of heaven but he who does the will of my father in heaven many will say to me in that day lord lord have we not prophesied in your name cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name and then i will declare to them i never knew you depart from me you who practice lawlessness underline practice that means even while you are doing a ministry dynamic ministry you can parallelly practice sins not struggling with sins in your struggle against sins you have not resisted till the till you are bloodshed hebrews says that means there is a struggle for everyone there is a war for everyone there is a conflict going on internally don't practice sins struggle fight against it can i prophesy something over you a new grace the holy spirit is imparting in blessing to the family today to boldly and confidently 
and strongly fight against the struggle against sins and wickedness in this world somebody lift your hands and receive it hallelujah hallelujah now i'm coming to the solution what is the solution for the flesh how can i overcome it how can i or some people say fast many people fast 21 days 40 days to conquer the flesh i don't recommend jesus prescribed prayer and fasting to cast out demons without fasting and prayer these kinds will not leave that means not fasting with the demon possessed man for 3 days or 7 days you have to live a lifestyle of fasting and prayer but for flesh i never see any scripture reference to fast and conquer the body many times it has the opposite effect people start fasting and all kinds of fleshly things will come up it will surface more angry more hungry more lust will come up fasting is not a solution for the flesh i'm sorry to say that i think i disappointed some of you you can still fast not for this intention fasting is a must not for this intention come to the right solution amen amen now this is the right place for the flesh is the cross everybody say that please the right, right place, place for the flesh, for the flesh is, the cross. is the cross you cannot rebuke the flesh pastor i have a lot of lust in the flesh please rebuke in the name of jesus all flesh go out it will not go out you can cast out demons flesh cannot be cast out no can you cast down the flesh no you can cast down strongholds but the flesh you have to crucify the flesh you have to put to death another term in the scripture put to death kill it murder it assassinate it amen another way starve the flesh to death starve it don't feed it i'll tell you how to feed it from morning till night open the tv all kinds of filthy shows movies keep on watching you are feeding your flesh no i am not watching tv what about mobile all kinds of things that is coming if you are allowing without restricting your eyes everything that is coming on whatsapp everything is, that is coming on youtube what is happening you're feeding the flesh touch here and everybody say i gate louder eye gate. what is this the i gate i gate what is this the ear gate. gate everybody the ear gate two main doors two main gates usually women are deceived by ear gate men are deceived by i gate that's a common tendency galatians 524 galatians 524 i am going to conclude those who belong to christ how many of you are belonging to christ lift your hands and shout hallelujah hallelujah, hallelujah. keep it there keep it there keep, lift it, lift it up lift your hands come on those who belong to christ move your hands like this those who belong to christ mm mm-hmm. move violently come on those who belong to christ jesus have ah crucified the flesh with its passions and desires that is the only solution amen hallelujah crucified how do you crucify you need a hammer and you need a nail mm-hmm. the old man was crucified once and for all 2000 years ago along with jesus amen right but this flesh even if you crucify even if you kill it it will resurrect again next day so this is about a daily crucifixion amen 
hello if you want to be my disciple you have to carry that cross come on daily everybody said daily daily so this is a daily practice amen the old man was crucified ah uh, once and for all 2000 years ago it is done away with that sin, sin nature has left your spirit but the remnant the residue in your soul and in your body you have to crucify it daily how take a nail and take a hammer and ah 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 what is that no 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 that is crucifixion amen somebody support this delivery boy please you understand in practical terms how to handle the flesh amen each time you say no to flesh you are crucifying amen you are nailing it again amen. again amen. and again amen simple that somebody and say it is so simple it is so simple it is so simple say no that's it amen and say yes to the holy spirit amen hallelujah that is crucifying this is not a great theological truth practically say no that's it do you know something but you need more courage and strength and guts to say the two letter word n o then to say the three letter word y e s you missed it you missed it you need more courage to say no remember joseph you remember joseph wonderful opportunity the mistress of the house daily the bible says she tempted him every day he said what no madam no ma'am no madam no madam no madam finally he wanted to catch him she wanted to catch him and he ran away from the scene hallelujah, hallelujah. jesus said in that famous prayer lead us not into temptation you remember that prayer yes you pray that prayer what is the real meaning what is the real meaning help me to position myself in such a way that i will not be tempted amen i will run away help me for that it is all about positioning yourself to flee away from all such tempting situations amen amen hallelujah hallelujah now this is a revelation listen to this your flesh should be crucified your body should be disciplined write that down important your flesh what is flesh the combination of your soul and body with the old programming that is your flesh your flesh needs what not discipline it should be crucified it should be put to death you should say no 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 starve it to death intake only the holy intake the word of god always listen to worship music not filthy film movie, film songs there are so many flesh booster stuff available in this world especially in the entertainment industry flesh booster stuff never go after that many people do it taking a term christian liberty Mm. it is not christian liberty it is a deception of the devil i tell you first corinthians chapter 9 verse number 27 the super apostle says but i strictly discipline my body hello body should be disciplined, disciplined. flesh should be crucified Crucif- everybody body should be disciplined flesh should be crucified once again body should be disciplined mm. and mm. the flesh should be crucified so the super apostle he says i strictly discipline my body and make it my slave so that uh, 
I have so that after I have preached to others I myself will not be disqualified even Paul had to do that even Paul's flesh was bad you understand what I'm saying Galatians 2 to this and I open or he says I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live but Christ lives in me the life i now uh, uh, the life i now live in the body i live by faith in the son of god who loved me and gave himself for me so many people have only an idea about the historical crucifixion of jesus but paul is talking about a daily experience of being crucified with christ i have been that means sometime in the past the action started still it is going on i have been crucified with christ that means even now i am hanging my flesh is hanging along with jesus every day monday tuesday wednesday thursday friday saturday sunday every day it is on the cross say hallelujah hallelujah amen i think the reference gave this example there was a family wonderful family wife and children they were so god fearing they used to pray but the husband the father in the family he was a drunkard and the wife and family they got saved in a prayer meeting and every day there was fellowship going on some kind of cell group meetings and everything they used to attend regularly but the fellow the family head he was drinking and watching very bad filthy movies in front of the children beating the wife he was a horrible man but one day when they came back from a prayer meeting there was no noise no attack no filthy movies no drinking why he had a heart attack and died no more problems this is what should happen with our flesh it should die so that there will be no more activities hallelujah say hallelujah hallelujah now a few old testament examples god could not give abraham and sarah the promise isaac until their flesh had died everything in them got weak and their flesh died then came the promise Isaac is the new birth Amen. the new life the new promise your flesh should die so that your spirit can live Amen. everybody lay your hands on your heart and say my flesh should die my flesh so that the spirit can live so that the spirit can live god waited until the rebellious and warring people to die in 40 years to allow the rest to enter the promised land 40 years it took it's a lifelong process Gideon's army had to break the jar the earthen jar to take out the torch the fire flesh should die so that the fire of the spirit can come out Amen. somebody say hallelujah hallelujah please stand Galatians chapter 5 verse number 22 and 23 after giving us the long list of 15 items the works of the flesh Paul is giving us nine items as the fruit of the spirit but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace forbearance kindness goodness faithfulness faithfulness gentleness and self control against such things there is no law Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now how many of you really cover to live a life in the spirit? Walk by the spirit, led by the spirit. Without the help of the Holy Spirit, nobody, absolutely nobody can. Hello, absolutely nobody can live a life pleasing God. Now, today the Holy Spirit is focusing on the deliverance from the flesh 
it's a process not a one time event it's a process you have to cooperate with the holy spirit you have to be led by the holy spirit you have to listen to the holy spirit you have to allow the holy spirit to live through you and the flesh to die lift your hands everybody thank you jesus pray this prayer after me lord jesus louder lord jesus louder lord jesus still louder lord jesus lord jesus thank you for the revelation help me to live a life after the spirit after the spirit in the spirit in the spirit led by the spirit help me lord holy spirit come and have your way have your way in me lead me not into temptations help me lord to position myself to escape all the temptations of the enemy holy spirit i love you i need you i trust you lead me lord in jesus name put your hands together and give him the loudest praise in the sanctuary come on please come on just close your eyes and meditate on the word that was shared the bible says the word of god has the power to transform each one of us so we are children of god and as we heard in the word in galatians chapter 5 and verse 24 those who belong to christ jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires each and every one of us has his own personal battle individual battle so let's just take a few moments of silence and confess our sins look to jesus the one who has won the sinless one the lamb of god who died for each of those sins the sin and the sinful nature in us the sins that we have committed and at the same time replace all of those with the victory available for us on the cross if the enemy is speaking into your life saying that you are you are uh, you are lost or you are in the losing team i want to remind you this resurrection sunday that this body and bread has the blood has the power to liberate to set free and most and most importantly give us eternal life that is no other body and blood that can give us eternal life so giving thanks to jesus let's raise the way for that represents the body of jesus christ lord we thank you for the body that was given for us lord jesus we remember it lord we commemorate it lord jesus as you taught each one of your disciples lord jesus and as we participate partake of the body lord jesus we also remember lord the covenant that you cut for us that's available for us lord jesus when we open this small cup filled with wine lord jesus remind our spirit our soul and our body lord jesus that we have been set free from sins by this new covenant that you cut for us 
that sin has no legal claim over us lord jesus we declare this over our life and we declare victory in jesus name we declare victory in jesus name we declare victory in jesus name and all of god's children said amen let's part- participate or partake of the lord's supper right now i have decided to follow together get ready to give to the lord and you might have received your offering envelopes if you need an envelope just lift up your hand and our volunteers will help you with that uh, just to guide you uh, we have a qr code in the back so if you prefer using upi you can use the qr code in the back people watching us online you have all the details on the screen and uh, the simple methods are all available on the screen and uh, this is how we participate in God's ministry through our giving, through our sacrificial giving, and uh, uh, may God bless us as we give. Can we together take what we have brought to the house of the Lord if it's ready? And we are together going to make a few declarations. Just repeat after me, Amen. Today, as I give, a bit more louder. Today, as I give, I give with a cheerful heart. I give knowing you are the Lord of the harvest. You will multiply the seed. You give seed to the sower. Thank you for the seed. I sow it to your kingdom. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. Let's together sow into the kingdom of God. And as you sow into the kingdom of God, we are going to watch a video of what the Lord did at Trivandrum last Thursday at Holy of Holies. And God moved powerfully in, in the Holy of Holies meetings and we want to do it in more cities. And uh, we're praying, uh, hopefully the next city is going to be Kotem. So uh, join us if you are, you know, willing to come and declare this over the city of Kotem. We will let you know more information in the coming days. But to all the Wonder Kids in the Teens Club sitting here, what is happening this week? What is happening this week? Summer Splash is happening this week and we are so excited to have you guys 
come here. Uh, the teams here are getting ready. We are, you know, last Good Friday you saw uh, what exciting things are happening. Uh, many of you already have received your kits last Good Friday, but if you have not received your kit yet, or if you have not gone to the counter to claim your kit yet, do it today itself because today is the last day. All right. So. Uh, make sure that if you have registered, go ahead and collect the kit. If you have not yet registered, do it today itself. We will have spot registrations on that day. But as you know, the kits are limited. So you might not receive the t-shirt and the kit if you do the spot registration. So uh, please make sure that you register today itself to receive your kit. And um, for all the kids here, 9 o'clock is the time that you need to report here. And you need to be wearing your t-shirt that you're uh, getting today or last Good Friday you've received it. You need to come in the t-shirt and with the badge that you've already received. You also have received some homework kits in the kit. So make sure that you uh, do your homework as well. This is a fun homework, so it's nothing to stress about. Uh, but uh, so yeah, this is just to encourage all the kids. And for all the parents here, from next Sunday onwards, during the summer vacation, we're going to have a series of special Sunday classes for the kids. And these are going to be topics covered by experts. So topics that normally we don't cover in the classrooms, uh, we're going to cover from this coming Sunday onwards. So please make sure that you send in your kids, usual Sunday service timings. For all the Youth Unlimited here, guess what? Youth service is back this week. Amen. So this Saturday at 5 p.m., we want to see you here. Uh, and after, uh, after the exam season, we have had online youth services, but this is going to be at 5 p.m. April 6th, Saturday, we want to see you for an amazing time of worship games and we're going to listen to the word. So super excited for that. And for all those who are watching us from the UAE, next week, as you know, it's holidays in the UAE and we're going to have a special meeting, healing and deliverance nights. Two days of powerful, powerful, power-packed sessions on deliverance and uh, Pastor Damien, Pastor Shema, Brother Sajid, they're all going to be ministering in the UAE next week. So uh, that will be at our Blessing Center in the UAE. So 5 p.m. to 9 p.m. It's going to be uh, a different meeting than our usual blessing festivals. This is during the week. Uh, so make sure that uh, you attend for this meeting. Amen. That's it for the announcements. Thank you so much for joining us for today's service. Can we stand up in our places and can we together shout three hallelujahs for our resurrected Savior? Come on. One more hallelujah. Let's put our hands together. Worship the Lord. Come on. Greatest day in history, death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross and the empty grave. Empty cross, the empty grave. Life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. Come on. He's alive. Happy day, I'll come put a smile on your face. Oh, happy day, happy day, you wash my sin away. Oh, happy day, happy day, I'll never be the same. Forever I am changed. Listen to the family, we want to wish everybody a happy Resurrection Sunday. May you be blessed. Go ahead and wish a few people happy Resurrection. And we have coffee served in the back. We'd love to meet you there. If you're here for the very first time, please would you uh, come forward. We would love to meet you and pray for you. If you're celebrating a birthday and wedding anniversary as well, please come forward. Our ministers will be prepared for you. Also, if you're...